streets and a half thousand people have been killed and around three million people have been left homeless. So far, the Disasters Emergencies Committee says it's raised £65 million for the relief effort. But with hundreds of thousands of homes damaged or destroyed, many people are still in desperate need of food, water, shelter and medical care. We're joined now by Caroline Anning from Save the Children. Good morning. And Orla Murphy from Oxfam joins us from Nepal. Um, good morning to you both. Orla, may we begin with you? Can you tell us what you're witnessing now? I mean, the situation is still incredibly grave. The humanitarian assistance is continued to be provided. Um, Oxfam is focusing on sort of provision of water and sanitation, emergency shelter as the monsoons are approaching. We're also working with communities to look at how they can start rebuilding their lives. I mean, as I said, the monsoon is approaching, so one of the things we're looking at and have started is distributing rice seed so that people can plant that rice seed before the end of this month, and then we'll have a harvest that comes in in, in three or four months, this allowing people to have both food as we move forward and also a cash crop to sell. So it's that concurrent, continued delivery of emergency relief items and looking to the future. Caroline, you've just come back from Nepal. How shocked were you by what you found? It was really, really shocking, actually. You know, you fly into Kathmandu and you see the damage in the capital, but then you go up to the mountainsides, and I was going up with our teams who were distributing aid there, and you see whole villages completely devastated. You can barely recognise it's a village. They're just piles of rubble. And you meet families who've lost their children, who've had relatives killed, who've lost absolutely everything. And so it is shocking, and it did kind of, you know, galvanise me to think how much we have to help, not just now, but going forward, once the rain starts, as Ola was saying, and then once the winter starts after that as well. And how much of an issue is disease going to be when, when we enter that next phase? It's a massive concern, definitely. I mean, as we say, with the rainy season starting next month, we've got huge amounts of rain that are going to be coming in, flooding the areas where people are living. Sanitation facilities have been destroyed. Families are telling me the water's coming out yellow, they can't drink the water, children are getting diarrhoea. Those kind of illnesses that can kill young children, that's the thing. They're the illnesses that adults can survive, but things like diarrhoea can kill young children. And also cholera outbreaks is a real possibility in Nepal. Orla, there, were much concern, or there was much concern about whether or not the aid would get through effectively. Can you tell us if it is getting through? There was concern about the remote areas, but also um, major towns and cities. I mean, aid is definitely getting through. Those initial blips that we saw in the first few days have been resolved. Um, Nepal is an incredibly mountainous country. So, I mean, I think one has to look at the logistics challenges. Um, I think Save the Children, Oxfam and many other agencies have been delivering um, essential aid. We've reached uh, over 150,000 people with our aid packages. Um, there still is, as Caroline said, a huge gap, still huge needs that absolutely need to be met before the monsoon. People are living in very difficult conditions. We did on the 12th of May have that second aftershock which created um, sort of an, a renewed fear and concern among populations as they move forward to start looking to rebuild their lives and ensure that they are as prepared as they can for the monsoons as they start to arrive. Caroline, what, what more needs to be done and what more can people here do to help? Well, the British public's been incredibly generous so far. 65 million, as you were saying, raised by the DEC is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's enabled us to start off the response, giving it that life-saving shelter kits, food, water to people. But going forward, you know, people's homes and also their schools and their hospitals aren't going to be, be rebuilt in months. It's going to take years. And so there's a massive amount of support we need to give people to live in safe and warm and dry places, to make sure that women can have babies in safe conditions, to make sure that children can go to school. That's the work that Save the Children and other agencies will continue to do with the support of the British public. So they can carry on donating to the DEC, they can donate to Save the Children or whichever is their preferred agency. OK, Caroline Anning, thank you very much. And Orla Murphy from Nepal, thank you very much.